Nick Batum just won a silver medal at the Olympics. His last years in the NBA weren't so successful though. Since he transferred to play for the Charlotte Hornets, he was often battling injuries and his playing time decreased from 35 minutes per game to 23. In his last season there, he shot an atrocious 34% from the field, scoring only 3.6 points per game. The Frenchman's days in the NBA seemed to be heading to the end, but the Clippers offered him a deal and revived his career. Let's look at why he was struggling in Charlotte, and then deep dive into how Tyron Lue smartly used Batum in Los Angeles, and why it worked amazingly in the playoffs. Before watching the tape, one number caught my eye the most. According to BasketballReference.com, Batum spent most of his career playing as a wing on the perimeter. In 12 seasons with Portland and Charlotte, he never spent less than 80% at small forward position, while relocating to shooting guard for the remaining 20. However, he was highly inefficient playing there in the last couple of years, since his spot-up shooting was terrible and he couldn't beat quick wings off the dribble anymore. He's only 32, but his athletic abilities are not what they once used to be, so something had to be done. The Clippers saw this problem and signed him to play alongside Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, which meant a lot more small ball and Batum transitioning to the big man role, setting screens and stretching the floor. Last year he spent 84% of his minutes playing power forward, and in the playoffs he even got to taste what it means to be a center, defending his native friend Rudy Gobert. This Tyron Lue idea worked perfectly for Batum. He obviously was asked to do less with two superstars on the court, but he was superb in his role. He shot only when he was open, after his man helped in the paint and knocked down 40.4% of his frees the second best result of his career. In closeout situations, he was matched up against bigger but a bit slower guys, making it easier for him to beat them off the dribble. Batum's importance grew during the playoffs. Clippers starting center Ivica Zubac was getting destroyed on the defensive end against the Mavs. He was dropping or switching against pick and rolls with Luka Doncic, and he couldn't stand his ground. Every time he stepped on the floor, Luka went on stunning mini runs, scoring 10 points and dishing out assists left to right in the matter of minutes. This lasted for the first three games of the Dallas LA series. After that, Lou decided to use exclusively only small ball lineups with Batum and Morris as the starting bigs. As a consequence, Batum and Terrence Mann got to play the center position. This was the birth of the defensive plan against Doncic, where Clippers switched all of the screens happening on the court. After that came a late double and it was important for LA to have mobile players in all positions for their rotations. This happened to be an efficient plan to stop the Mavericks. So Tyron Lue kept the same plan against the Jazz and Donovan Mitchell. It meant more minutes to Batum and he delivered. In 33 minutes per game he had a 10 point and 6 rebound average, but the most impressive part was his 52% shooting from free. You might wonder how did Batum get away with defending Gobert or Porzingis. It's actually easier than you could imagine. Both Dallas and Utah are constructed to play through perimeter with their guards controlling the ball most of the time. Their systems are pick and roll heavy, so even with Batum guarding Gobert, there were no post ups involved. This made life on defense for Nick a bit easier. While Batum's decline on the offensive end of the court is visible, he is still an above average defender. So, when matched up against Mitchell or Jordan Clarkson, he still had some great individual defensive possessions, showing his versatility. He is a high IQ defender, not jumping on fakes, rather using his length contesting the shots. The Jazz usually wanted Gobert or Favors to be the screen setters, but that brought Batum on Jazz perimeter players. Utah were immediately calling for another screen, not wanting Batum matched up against Donovan or Conley, thus recognizing him as a solid defender. We saw this happen more than once. Now let's head over to the other side of the court and analyze how Nick playing as a big man benefited him and the Clippers. First of all, when you have a center guarding you, their natural instinct is to help on any kind of drive or pass inside. So with George, Leonard and Reggie Jackson penetrating and beating their own opponents, Batum had many opportunities for wide open frees. Gobert and Ayton left him open many times, counting on rotations, but Clippers did a good job of moving the ball quickly. The Frenchman shot 72 three-pointers in the playoffs, and only 7 of them were considered closely defended. If rotations did move fast enough, Nick showed off his unselfishness and why it should be hella fun to play with this guy. You can count on him making an extra pass every time he doesn't have enough space to shoot, 
his feet are not set or he simply sees a teammate in a better position. I rewatched a couple of these games to get the clips and found many of these extra passes very quickly. And while this super small ball lineup was invented for defensive purposes, it was a great option for Tyron Lue in the offense too. Having a traditional center setting the pick or him standing around the paint would have meant dealing with Rudy Gobert around the rim. You can see here what it means to Clippers guards. They get to the rim but are forced to pass out since shooting over him is not the most attractive idea. Here Kawhi is against Royce O'Neal and the only thing Gobert can do is stunt towards him instead of jumping and contesting the shot around the rim like he's used to. Batum standing at the 3 point line eliminates Gobert from the play and he is late to even close the gap. No one is helping O'Neal and Kawhi dunks the ball. Now here look at Favors positioning. He stands tippy toeing in and out from the paint to not get called for a technical foul. Also it looks like his man should be standing next to him ready to go to set a screen. It would be a usual setting, with a big man going up, but Batum is spacing out and letting Kawhi play one on one. This is the easiest pass to make, and nobody is recovering that fast to prevent the shot. This next clip was a perfect example of what this super small ball lineup did to Jazz defense. Gobert was usually left in the middle of nowhere, he wanted to help on drives, but was usually late because of the distance, and then he was late on kickouts. This simple lineup change was a perfect counter argument to Gobert's presence in the paint, where he won 3 Defensive Player of the Year awards. Once again looking at it from Batum's perspective, this change of position made him efficient on the drives too. He was matched up against slower guys who helped on the drives, making these closeouts really long and hard. The only way to stop him before scoring at the rim was using these tactic fouls before he went into his shooting motion. Smart move of Tyron Lue worked not only for Batum. Terrence Mann averaged only 4 points against Dallas and then exploded against the Jazz, upping his average to 10 points per game. In a decisive game 6, he scored 39 while making 7 threes from 10. Huge part of his success came when he was guarded by Gobert, who once again was caught in the middle of nowhere. From wing to big man. From using the screens to setting the screens. From creation to finishing the plays. This change of playing style was the main catalyst to Nick Batum's successful season in LA. Compliments to him and to Tyron Lue and the whole Clippers front office for still seeing value in the Frenchman's game after a huge decline of production in Charlotte. Their vision was clear from the beginning and with minor tweaks in the playoffs it paid off big time. The Clippers reached the Western Conference Finals even with Kawhi Leonard suffering a season-ending injury while Nick Batum got a two-year contract extension. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.